destroyer of worlds, oh my god! Hey gang, I'm JP and welcome back to Egotastic Fun Time! Are all the longtime Star Trek fans who have reluctantly signed on for one more adventure with Captain Picard going to jump ship now that it seems that this 24th century next generation adventure could connect directly to season 2 of Star Trek Discovery's Red Angel Magic Space Sphere Time Travel Debacle? I just watched episode 3 of Star Trek Picard and while I was very impressed by the first two episodes this season, this one fell a little flat in some areas. Like I always say when I go to see my proctologist, it's a lot to take in. In Discovery's second season, there was some sort of artificial intelligence from the future trying to upload information from an ancient space sphere thing to help itself from the past evolve and become powerful enough to explode everybody. Hipster Spock had a vision of all these worlds being destroyed and went crazy from it because it broke his Vulcan mind. In the beginning is the end, Soji and Hugh go to meet a reclaimed Borg lady named Ramda at the XB Romulan Looney Bin aboard the Borg Cube. Turns out there are some disconnects connected ex-Borg on the cube that didn't recover very well. They're all mentally disturbed and all of them turn out to be Romulan for some reason. Ramda freaks out and says she recognizes Soji. She remembers her from the Tomorrow. She's the destroyer of worlds. When Ramda says I remember you from Tomorrow, to me that means she remembers her from the future. A future where Soji is the destroyer of worlds just like that AI from the future was the destroyer of worlds in Discovery's second season. For some reason Ramda's ship was the last one assimilated by this board cube before something happened that caused it to be disconnected from the collective and left for dead. We don't know why the Borg decided to purge this submatrix from itself or if the cube is from the future, but I have a theory on that and I'll get to it in just a bit. In this episode we meet most of Jean-Luc's new team beginning with a flashback just after the synth attack on Mars when Picard tells his second in command, Raffi, that he gave Starfleet a choice between continuing the Romulan rescue mission or accepting his resignation. To Jean-Luc's shock, they easily chose the latter. In the flashback, we can see at the time that Raffi was a bit of a Picard fangirl when she was younger. She was a little too anxious and wide-eyed for me personally. Also, I can't stand that she calls him JL. It's just so clunky of a nickname. But mostly, I don't like her calling him JL because it's different from what I'm used to and I'm set in my ways. I don't like it because she overuses it too much. One thing I know about people is that they don't call each other by their first names when they're having conversations with each other unless it's in reference to a person or you're trying to get their attention. When we catch up with JL and Raffi in the present we see that Raffi is angry at JL not because JL left Starfleet and that she got fired because of her connection to JL but because JL never checked in with her afterwards because JL also seemed to have left her behind. Turns out Raffi had a fall from grace when she was fired from Starfleet and she acquired some vices along the way as she let her life go to shit. I like the idea of Raffi feeling betrayed by her friendship with Jean-Luc and she's angry with him and that she's a crackhead now. But her substance addiction kind of came off as fake to me. Wine is basically fruit juice. I like Raffi though. Just thought her introduction was too much tell and not enough show. Or maybe it was too much show and not enough tell. Anyway, we're also introduced to our new ship and pilot, Captain Rios. Now, I've been worried about this character ever since the trailers for the series started popping up. It seemed like they were going for a Han Solo type, and while there is a bit of that rogue feel to Rios, he was a very nice surprise. He used to be the XO of a Starfleet ship with some great captain that he totally adored. Something happened 10 years ago during the Romulus supernova when it destroyed Romulus, and he blindly followed his captain on some mission that got his captain killed, got him kicked out of Starfleet, and his ship erased from the history books. Another cover-up that I'm sure is going to uh, show up later on in the season that we're gonna find out what that's all about. Being that he's a lone wolf, Captain Rios's crew, from what I can tell, are all hologram characters, also played by Santiago Cabrera, who plays Rios. We're introduced to the emergency medical Roddy McDowell type hologram, as well as something new to me, the emergency navigational hologram, who in true 90s Star Trek fashion has an iron Irish accent. Unlike Discovery, which is meant to be a popcorn eating pew pew explosion action adventure show, yay, Star Trek Picard is meant to be a drama. It's meant to be slower, and so far when it comes to CBS Trek, fans seem to prefer that. Picard is breaking numbers for the streaming service, not necessarily like Netflix numbers or 
any other streaming service you've heard of numbers, but they're good numbers for all access, I guess. Despite the dramatic nature of Star Trek Picard, it's not too heavy of a tone at all, which is something I was very worried about with this show. I thought it was going to be too dark, too gritty. No, it's not like that. There's a levity there. That's a nice change of pace from what we've gotten before from CBS. There are nice moments of hopeful consideration and reflection, which is really nice. There's some semblance of humanity in this show, which makes it easier to recognize its successes and brush past some of its minor failures, which are 94.2% less than the amount of failures found in Star Trek Discovery. Jonathan Del Arco back as Hugh turned out to be pretty awesome. I mean, I had no idea what Hugh was gonna be like when we finally caught up with him again. I mean, last time we saw him, he was very Borgish. Now he's part of the reclamation project on the Romulan controlled cube. He's restoring or bringing these people back, trying to get them to find their humanity again. He's a big wig on the cube. It's a little bit creepy, to be honest, but he has a bit of a sinister vibe coming off of him. But of course, as Star Trek fans, we all know that he's a good guy. So I really want to know a lot more about his backstory, but since the show isn't called Star Trek Hugh, I doubt we learn too much about him. Not sure what's up with the evil Tal Shiar Commodore, though. I mean, she's definitely part of the Jat Vash, which is Romulan, and she sneakily, you know, infiltrated Starfleet and the Federation, but everyone thinks she's a Vulcan, which I assumed was going to be the case last week. She's either an evil Vulcan or she's a Romulan pretending to be a good Vulcan. There's also this weird scene where Commander O goes to talk to Dr. Jumadi about why she might know about Picard, and she's wearing sunglasses. And I get it, it's a sunny day. I mean, I would think hundreds of years from now that people still wear sunglasses on sunny days, but Dr. Jumadi wasn't wearing sunglasses. Does Commodore O have a sensitivity to light like Captain Lorca did? Is she from the Mirror Universe? But the light sensitivity only affected humans. It was part of their evolution, so that doesn't make sense. If humans evolved to be sensitive to light, they wouldn't have evolved to be what we know as humans in the first place. Absolutely love Loving Laris and Jabon, they get better every episode. They're awesome. I would love to take them aboard to be part of the crew throughout the entire season. The kicking ass and taking names. The fight scene between them and the Tal Shiar was great. Though the start of it was a bit awkward with the apple dropping on the floor, but hey. As we know, Starfleet banned synths after the attack on Mars, and it would appear this is exactly what the Romulan Tal Shiar wanted. Picard doesn't believe the Romulans would try to destroy the ships that were meant to save them, but I don't think the Tal Shiar are trying to save the Romulans as much as they're trying to stop some sort of big bad from the future from destroying the galaxy. They have information that others don't have that has to do with taking out all sense before they can take us out, and they're probably right. This is bigger than simple empires and federations, and only a few know about what's really going on, because as Laura said in last week's episode, it'll make you mad to know the truth. Oh, just like all those Romulan ex-Borgs went mad on the Borg cube, what? Meanwhile, back on that Romulan controlled Borg cube, Soju is called out as being Armageddon's future baby mama by a cray cray lady named Ramda. Then all of a sudden, Soji knew a bunch of stuff about Ramda's ship when it was assimilated, and that it was the last ship taken by that Borg cube before the cube was disconnected. Q doesn't even know any of that information and doesn't know how Soji could possibly know it. Later on in her quarters, right before she gets Remist right in the A by Narek. She says that she didn't know any of that information right before then. Five minutes before, she had no idea. The information just seemed to show up in her mind all of a sudden. In case you forgot, Soji is an organic synth built by Bruce Maddox who thinks she's human, but she isn't human, you guys. She's an android. Crazy Ramda says that she recognizes Soji from the tomorrow and that she's the destroyer. Now, we don't know if the cube is from the future or not, or if it assimilated some sort of virus or information that would have infected the rest of the Borg collective and it had to be instantly disconnected from it. But I also don't think that Ramda was actually in the future to see Soji either, you guys. In season two of Discovery, Spock and Pike sent a probe into the future and it came back all of a sudden all upgraded and was trying to destroy their shuttle. We never learned what that was all about because the disco writers probably just forgot about it. If Ramda saw Destroyer Soji in the future, but was it in the future, do you think that she might have just uploaded some of the future evil AI to her brain when she was part of the Borg Collective? She never saw Soji. She's just accessing the future data and translating it as a memory. Is whatever Soji ends up possibly becoming in the future the one that actually sent that killer probe back to Captain Pike and Spock's shuttle? Michael Burnham in her stupid time suit stopped the evil AI from completing 
completing its task in Discovery's second season. Is another version of the AI from a different part of the timeline trying to make a go of it again in Picard's timeline? We've been led to believe that Soji and Dodge were built by Bruce Maddox, but could it be that they were actually built in the future using Maddox's research by the evil AI and they were sent back in time to lay the groundwork for the end of the universe? Like Terminators? Something on Rhonda's ship caused the Borgs to disconnect the artifact from the collective and run. Do you think it has something to do with the ancient space sphere from Discovery? Are you anything like me and hope that I'm completely wrong? You can let me know what you think by joining the conversation below. Click on another video for more and as always, I hope all your times are egotastic fun times. Love you, bye bye!